Hi, my name is Christoph Schröder and I'm from the University of Bremen. In our work, my colleagues and I analyze how varying stimuli and trajectory lengths influence the classification accuracy for eye movement biometrics. In eye movement biometrics, we try to identify people solely on the way they gaze at things. On the right hand side, you can see that two users that read the same poem have vastly different gaze patterns. The same is true when the task is not to read a poem, but follow a random moving dot on a screen. Eye movement biometrics have some unique advantages. First, we have an automatic liveness check. Second, we can use it for seamless and continuous authentication in that the user isn't required to do a special authentication step, but is continuously authenticated while he uses his normal software. And last, we can use it in HMDs. Actually, there are already consumer-grade HMDs where eye track is in tracking is integrated, for, for example, for waved rendering. Previous work can be split into three major areas. First, there was the Bio-Eye competition by Regas et al. in 2017, where seven participants competed to achieve the highest accuracy in identifying 153 users solely by gaze patterns. This was task-dependent in that the users were either reading a poem or following a random dot. The winning entry by George et al. achieved an astonishing accuracy of 82-84%. to 84%. Another area is task-independent person authentication. Here, for example, in the work by Kimun et al. from 2010, the user isn't required to read a poem each time, but can do several things. Kimun et al. use Gaussian mixture models to build a background model for general gaze patterns, and then model each user in regard to this background model. Another work is by Davish et al. from 2013, where they use random forests and also identify 17 users with an accuracy of 37%. The last area is multimodal biometrics. Here, for example, in the work by Feufer et al. from 2019, 18 users were recorded, and not only their gaze patterns, but also their head movements and typing behaviors were used to differentiate between them with a support vector machine. With only the view-based features, an accuracy of 24% was achieved. As we can see, in previous works, the evaluation was either very task-dependent or the number of users in the studies was quite small. In this work, we present three major contributions. First, we extend the current state of the art classifier by George et al. by adding more features to increase its accuracy. And second, we use random forest to increase the robustness in the task independent setting. Second, we analyze how using a different stimulus in testing than it was used for training influences the identification accuracy. Last, we analyze how the length of the training and testing trajectory influences the accuracy. This is especially important for the application where the user doesn't want to wait too long until the authentication is completed. Let me now introduce our identification pipeline. As input, we get a trajectory, which is mostly encoded in gaze angles. We then split the trajectory into saccades and fixations. A fixation is a point where the user looks at for a short amount of time, and a saccade is a rapid eye movement that goes from fixation to another fixation. We can identify these two different parts by looking at the velocity and using the IVT algorithm. For each saccade and each fixation, we build an individual feature vector. And these vectors are then fed into the classifier. Actually, we use two classifiers, and one classifier predicts the user for each saccade and the other one for each fixation. This is important as the saccades and fixations have vastly different feature scalings. The predictions are then accumulated to get a final prediction for the trajectory. In our work, we found that averaging the prediction works quite well. In this work, we use two different classifiers. First, we re-implement the radial base function networks by George et al. Here, in the hidden layer, we have C times K neurons, where C is the number of users and K is an arbitrary constant. 
In our work, we found 32 to be a good default. As activation function phi, radial base functions are used, as the name implies. For these, we have to estimate two parameters. Mu is estimated by doing a k-means clustering, where we find 32 clusters for each user. From there, we can estimate sigma by just taking the mean Euclidean distance to the cluster centers. In a final step, we have to weight the outputs from the hidden layer to get the prediction probabilities for each users in the output. The weighting is done by calculating the Moore-Penrose pseudo-inverse to minimize the classification error. As a second classifier, we use random decision forests as the generalization uh, ability is well proven. In our work, we use all the default settings from scikit-learn, but increase the number of trees to 400 to account for the number of features and samples. For the features, we start with the same set of features as they were used by George et al. They proposed an iterative feature selection scheme to find the best features for the fixations and saccades. They also made it depend on the input stimulus and then found nine features for fixations and 43 to 40 for the saccades. In our work, we found that when we use all features, regardless of whether it's in a fixation or a saccade, or the stimulus is text or random dot, works better. In our first experiment, we confirm that our re-implementation achieves the same accuracy as the original algorithm by George et al. Then, we analyze whether using random decision forests improves the performance, but found that it actually performs slightly worse. We also found that the stimulus, whether it's text or random moving dot, doesn't have much of an impact on the accuracy. When we use all features and omit the feature selection step, we found that for all configurations, the accuracy in increases. This shows that at least in these settings, both radial base function networks and random decision forests work better when no feature selection step was performed. In a second experiment, we train on one stimulus, like the random moving dot, and evaluate on the data where the participants read the poem. In general, we find that the maximum accuracy drops significantly, from before 94% to now 23%. We further found that the performance is highly asymmetrical. That is, when we train on random dot and evaluate on the poem, the performance is much worse than the other way around, where we train on poem and evaluate on text. Further, we find that the random decision forest this time generalizes better than the random decision forest. In another experiment, we analyze two more things. First, we take a look at how the number of training and testing samples influences the identification accuracy. This is especially important in an application where the user can't be required to sit in front of a monitor for one hour just to get locked in. Second, we take a look whether a weekly task independent setting works for gaze biometrics. That is, the user this time does not have the same stimulus for training and testing, but in both cases has very different stimuli. For this, we use a new dataset namely the MIT dataset by Jude et al. from 2009. Here, 39 users looked at photos for 3 seconds each. Overall, each user looked at the photos for 50 minutes. In our results, we found that weekly task-independent setting works quite well for gaze biometrics. In this plot, you can see how increasing the number of training images increases the accuracy when the number of test images is fixed to 30. 30 images means that the user was recorded for 90 seconds. And also with 90 seconds of training images, we can see that we have an accuracy of about 85%. When we fix the number of training images to 30 and increase the number of test images, we once again see 
that with more test images and therefore more trajectories, the accuracy improves. But at only 90 seconds of test data, we already have an accuracy of over 86% and it doesn't increase that much thereafter. To conclude, in our work, we first improved the state-of-the-art task-dependent identification by 5.2 percentage points. Second, we found that task-independent identification is not currently possible with the classifiers we tested. Actually, the performance is highly asymmetrical and depends on the task that was used for training and for testing. Last, we analyzed how many training and testing data is needed for an accurate identification and found that with only 90 seconds of training and testing data, an accuracy of over 86% can be achieved. 94% accuracy can only be achieved when the training data is very large. All our code is freely available on our homepage. For future work, we would like to decrease the number of training and testing samples needed even more to make the identification faster. Also, the weighting from the predictions of the saccades and fix fixations was done by averaging in our work. There might be a better way to do it and also consider which part of the trajectory the saccade or fixation belongs to. Last, recurrent neural networks seem to be a promising method when no feature engineering steps would be needed. Thank you very much for your attention.